What's going on guys? Whew. It's a little colder outside than I expected. Welcome back to Better Biomed. Guys, I am uh, in Houston, Texas outside Project Cure and we are here at night surrounded by a whole bunch of cars because tonight the HTMA for Texas, we met at Project Cure. Project Cure is a charity organization for medical equipment. I believe the largest one in the world where they take used medical equipment, they ship it around the entire world to places in need. And so, since I've been here, uh, I've been amazed at the scale of this facility. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this camera around. I'm gonna show you, I, I was gonna bring out the drone and everything, but holy cow, um, it's, it's nighttime. I've been touring this place, and if you can imagine, there's used medical equipment and stuff everywhere. There's stuff I haven't seen in years here. And I'm so excited because you can play with whatever you want, right? It's it's an open market. This isn't a hospital. This is this is a warehouse. So we can play with whatever we want. So I, I'm I'm fascinated. Let's go ahead and let's take a look inside Project Cure, and uh, let's get a tour. Let's do it. Okay, guys. God, it's so cold out here. So this is Project Cure. This this warehouse right here. It's bigger than you think. Holy cow. Let's let's go ahead and get to it. So the HTMA. We're a pretty active group over here in Texas and we're just fortunate that we have entities like Project Cure. So uh, we can do a variety of events. It's not just people sitting in a boardroom and whatnot. This is us getting out and actually making a difference. So you're gonna see a whole bunch of people in here. If it's loud, I apologize, but that's okay because you gotta remember uh, HTMAs are groups of biomeds from all sorts of uh, places and they all get together, uh, well, right now, once a month, I think. So uh, let's do it. Let's go ahead and go inside. Oh, because it's cold outside. All right. Hey, All right, guys. Justin. All right, so uh, here we are. This is the first room, and this is the staff. Believe it or not, Project Cure, it, they don't have very many employees. It's mainly a volunteer organization. As you can see, many of the people back here, they're currently setting stuff up. This room, uh, please introduce yourself and let, let, let's, let's, uh, let's talk about what you got going on here. Hi Justin, welcome to Project Cure Houston. I'm Janet Thomason, Director of National Procurement and somewhat over our Biomed area. Here with me today I also have Megan. Megan is the Director of our KITS program for kits that we send out, whether they're health and hygiene or what I call industrial strength medical kits. And Jenna is our wonderful Operations Director here in Houston, responsible for our volunteers and our cargo shipments that go out. You are walking into what we call our fine sort or final sort room. This area talks, uh, covers our consumable items. Every one of our cargo containers is 50% consumable items and 50% biomedical and equipment. These are those items like needles, gauze, syringes, etc. that go as part of our containers. One very important thing to share about Project Cure is before we send items out into countries, we mandate that we do an assessment process. That goes in and it visits with the stakeholders in country, in the facilities, and determines what we send to them. What aspect of their health system needs strengthening? Is it surgical bench strength? Is it maternal and fetal and child health? Is it trauma or just general medicine? We determine what aspect of their organization, of their location, is going to be strengthened, sometimes hitting on more than one of those pillars. So we would determine, do you need insulin needles? Do you need fetal care items? And we're going to give you uh, ultrasounds and fetal Dopplers, etc. But this part of the building is focused on our consumables. One of my favorite rooms that we have here, I didn't even let Justin see what? this one before. <laughs> no, nah, come on. This is a, oh yay, it's in good order. All right. This is our surgical oh, my gosh. room. Holy cow. So, so here you have parts of the hospital that can donate our, um, you might say, sterile processing or the OR. Our wonderful team who's in here once a week comes in and takes all these instruments and builds surgical kits. So when we talk about building healthcare strengthening along the aspects of surgical bench strength, it's hard to operate if you don't have instruments. So we love to get the repair companies to come in here to help make sure our scissors are sharp and our, our forceps are all working well and build those into sets. 
Right now, one of the things we really need are the um, sterilizing containers so that we can pack those sets in there. Right. This is a room that really makes a lot of our potential recipients drool because these are precious items. There's so much money in this room. Yeah. That's, that's There's amazing. There's so much health and health in that room, okay. right? So, um, amazing. come through here, we have a whole room that deals with sutures and suture sizes. If we come over here, we'll jump into our biomed room. It's always full, it's always busy, it's and not the always the neatest place on the planet, but a lot of great work does gets done in here. We have volunteer biomeds. Hey. Hello. <laughs> we have Mike Brown from San Jacinto College's program here, who's with us every week. We have all the testing equipment here, um, and again, a lot of activities been going on in here today, so it is not clean. Sorry about that. Are you kidding me? This is cleaner um, than almost any biomed shop that I'm used to seeing. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. That makes us feel good. So we have the tools we need in here to do repairs and to take care of all the items that come through. Because as we collect surplus medical equipment from hospitals, from manufacturers, from everybody else, uh, we need to make sure we check it and make sure it's working. Okay. Coming into the big warehouse, we're passing through some items. So is this receiving? Is this? this is receiving. Okay. This is where our truck comes in and drops off the things we've collected from hospitals here in Houston. We also have facilities in Phoenix, in Chicago, there we go. in Denver, in Kansas City, Missouri. I had to switch the camera just because uh, the scale. Uh, I could only capture part of the frame at a time. This is this warehouse is so ma massive. So you guys think you can see it, but uh, nah. Yeah. Hold on. And we need an honest thing. The bird's eye I mean, view, Justin. See, it's the little things, guys. You guys know I'm a nerd for stuff, right? We got some ESUs hiding on the bottom Look at that. there. This is incoming, waiting for everybody to take it this apart. Is, this is nothing. So Ready? we are looking for people to come out and repair this equipment <laughs> this, for This us. is only part of the warehouse, guys. It's only part of it. So over here, you have what happens when those consumable gets packed. So we have rows and rows of consumables, all sorts. Actually, we got cables. We've got Let's go down to random medical devices. We have bulbs. We have cords. We have stuff. We have chairs. <laughs> <laughs> we got stuff. I, I, oh my gosh. I went down one aisle and it was just power bricks. Yep. There's so much money in just power bricks. We get batteries. So right now we have, we've been working on sorting our cables, making sure oh, yeah. we have all the cables we need. Yeah. Holy when we cow. talk about shortages, uh, right now one of our big shortages is reusable defibrillator paddles. So if anyone has any tucked away in their biomed corners, Please get them to us. Yeah, guys, you got any uh, defibrillator paddles? What about the inside paddles, interior paddles? Interior paddles, interior we paddles too. Internal paddles, we can use exterior. Heck yeah. There's a huge demand for external paddles Look here. how big this Over warehouse is, guys. And it goes way up there. In fact, uh, the guys from Icicle were just here. Yeah. And uh, they, they are a proud supporter of the program. Yeah, you will see uh, lots at, of different boxes around our warehouses. From we our probably have several hundred thousand dollars worth of just cables here. So these are all the different cables and probes and stuff that are used on medical equipment. And the thing is, how many times in your biomed shop have you uh, not had the cable that you need to test something out? That is not a problem here per se. Uh, well, I would say, Justin, we can always use more cables because you know the infinite problem. Yeah. You can have 100 cables, but you need the 100 and once, all right? Um, oh my gosh. Down this aisle, we see 11 pallets that were donated from one of the hospital systems, special ordered. Those will be headed into the Middle East crisis. Project Cure is dealing with disasters as well as strengthening healthcare systems looking to sustain those SDGs. So, what we need our biomed wow. friends to do is keep on the lookout and say, what is being retired that could save somebody's life and make a difference in the developing countries where we serve? Guys, this, this is the consumable side. Because when, when these guys ship out containers to countries in need, half the container is gonna be the equipment, the other half is gonna be consumables. Because isn't that the nature of healthcare? Is that without the consumables, the equipment is absolutely useless. Look at this, I mean, there's, there's so many different types of bulbs and stuff in here, that's amazing. Fuses and cables. Yeah. And Justin, if we look at last year and the impact that Project Cure had, we are looking at 218 shipments that went out valued over 74 million dollars into geez. 48 countries and serviced get this 10 million people so 10 million patients in the hospitals 
that received items. And that does not include the people who were benefited by the disaster aid in Ukraine and in the Middle East and everywhere else because there were also disasters, earthquakes, hurricanes. It was a rough year last year for, for, um, for disasters. And then there's Jeez. the most important part of our work, health system strengthening around the world. Batteries. Yeah. Surplus batteries. Holy cow. Yeah. So Let's go we're actually, part. we're going into the equipment side and technically, technically is there some of the healthcare leaders right there they stopping out. So we have, uh, the equipment technically starts here on the back side. Um, they have massive amounts of defibrillators. And believe it or not, uh, the consumables, the consumables are one of the major drawbacks on why they can't deploy them because consumables have an expiration date. Customs won't allow items into port if they uh, are expired. So even though in the United States we can get an extension on many expiration dates, many foreign countries will not allow them. I know, it's weird. Even an expired item is still useful, but that is not how they treat it. So, so over here, just when you start, when you cross into what we call the outside section, yeah. you'll see a big pile of, of transformers here because we have to make sure that the items that were made to go on 120 can be uh, oh, stepped yeah. up into 220. I never so, even thought about that. That's what our job is, is to worry about customs, to worry about what the need is. Does it fit through the door? Can they power it? Who's going to fix it? Do step they up, have water? Step up transformers. Yep, all kinds of transformers that we How buy crazy. by the unit. So you guys uh, refit uh, the power supplies that are inside the device. Oh my God. Now this is a, this is a little bit of a clutter. No, here, this, is, this is awesome. Tremendous need here. We're waiting. These beds are waiting for repair. But you'll see manual scales. Um, gurneys. We're really short of gurneys right now. We just got blessed with a whole bunch of, of bassinets nice. here, patient chairs. We oh, have 31 look at these. key items. Nice. These came out of COVID. Yeah, um, nice. And yes, for now they're vaccine transport. Great vaccine transport devices. Man, I, I, I would imagine, um, you know, even some of these countries that do uh, um, transplants and stuff, those, those would be now priceless. Let's head back up this way. We're going oh into, God. now you see we have a lot of V100s over here. What a great project for students to come and learn and test those V100s. All the defibrillators were All those awaiting defibs paddles. defibs that need their paddles. Beyond this, we, we kind of got a little traffic jam going over here because we are trying to get all these beds fixed. But you'll see ESUs and other units over there. If we come around the back, we got some light sources oh for checking over here. Cribs. Crib mattresses. How crazy. Did you discontinue? Boxes. Yep. Interesting because, you know, in the United States, we, we throw those out. However... Yep. A lot of places still use film. A lot of places them. And we're even looking for really high quality or still really good a portable x-rays. Okay. Oh, so precious. Such a shortage right now. Oh, I um, could understand that. That would make sense. Um, Cribs. Defib, or I'm sorry, crib mattresses. Uh, we just had a, somebody had to make us some crib mattresses. But all of this, when we talk maternal, fetal, child, pediatric beds, all of that critical. Your mattresses can head to Project Cure when they're not stained and they're not cut. Because right. um, they can reupholster those. Absolutely. Well, we don't reupholster a mattress usually, but mattresses really? are just always handy. There's companies um, that do that. I came back from um, Uganda on a trip, and I saw so many mattresses that were just dirty foam open. We can do better than that. We've got lots of OR lights. If you're taking your OR lights out and replacing them, call Project Cure in those cities, and we will send a truck to pick up the old ones. When we run down the line here, you oh can't see gosh. our crash carts and our medication oh, look, carts are a little buried. You got a whole bunch of, uh, bunch uh, of lapro carts in them. We are looking for uh, lap towers, endo towers, ventilators. Again, going through. Nice. Some of those we're going to combine. We've got infant warmers are really important. All the maternal fetal stuff, the maternal or the infant vents, critical items. We've got some parts robbed. Right, right. <laughs> incubators. That's to be expected. We've got some great incubators that need to be made and also need biomeds to come and work on those. One very small thing, Justin, it seems like a small thing that's a big thing, are exam lights. Just portable freestanding exam lights. Portable freestanding OR lights. Lights, period. Exam tables. All of those things. Here we've got a few um, EKGs in this section. We've got some ultrasounds up here, and we've got surgical microscopes over there. Culposcopes, regular lab microscopes, small centrifuges, 
And then we're getting into the big stuff. Beds, treatment tables, etc. Sorry for the shaky uh, video, guys. So we got a lot. Yeah. We've got volunteer biomeds here from Houston's HTMA group. We are so excited to have them here. Um, and seeing what we do and touching hands on. We'd love for you to bring your team over here for a volunteer event, for a team building event, and join us here in Houston or in any of those other facilities across the U.S. Just a little bit of stuff, Justin. It's, it's about eight or nine feet tall, guys. I, I know the camera's not doing it justice. Mind you, I'm lifting the camera well above my head. <laughs> 38,000 square feet in this facility. About 55,000 square feet in some of our other ones. We cram as much into here as we can. Look at those beautiful exam tables. I see them. I like those them. Those are heading uh, to some pediatric facilities. I would think those ones are, I mean, obviously pediatrics are special. Yep. But a general Ritter would logistically make more sense because Ritters are probably more versatile and they're lighter. Yep. I mean, those are great for pediatrics, but these, believe it or not, number one use for a lot of these. When they have their stirrups, is these ah, become birthing beds. Birthing beds, yeah. Birthing beds, not not the optimal one. We'd love to have it those works. beautiful birthing beds, but it works. It and works. we've got moms who are laboring on the floor. We don't need to have that happen. There's plenty of things we can do. Oh, this look at is, that! Um, oh, cool. We call this bassinet row. Yeah, yeah. Down here, and we have in the back there. Project Cure is a signature partner of Stryker. We were honored with a donation of 20, 25,000 emergency relief beds and distributed those nice. over a period of about two years. In here, it looks pretty empty by Project Cure standards. We just shipped off a cargo container to Ethiopia earlier this week. Usually you will find the next load staging here. Each one of our cargo containers is loaded on the floor, so we have no open space. We fill the drawers, we fill the nooks, we fill the crannies, and pack it like a Tetris game. On average, we've got about $350,000 to $450,000 worth of stuff ends up on those containers, but we don't cap it with a value. We cap it to match the need of that program, again, so going in country. The way it works is you guys first go in, on site, you determine the needs according to what they say their needs are and according to what you witness. And then uh, you create a bill or, or a, uh, manifest. Yep, yep. a manifest of what they need. And then you have how many locations? Seven facilities across oh, the geez, US. Oh, jeez, I don't even have that many fingers, yep. guys. I, uh, <laughs> you got seven. So, uh, so what they do is they look across their facilities and they see who's best to, equipped to fulfill the order. And then when they do, they go through uh, the equipment's received it's, you know, obviously it's in the warehouse and multiple spots. Then volunteer force comes in and we check out the equipment according to what they need per order. And then they fulfill it and when it's inspected. And, and the thing is, I don't think we have any of them here immediately. They, they have an inspection sheet, which is itemized with all the stuff. So it actually has a full regular PM. And then uh, when it finally meets all the certifications, that is when uh, that signed PM sheet, which the, the tech that did it, it goes along with the item and it gets staged over here where then it gets loaded onto a, a container and it goes out. And uh, it, you have one per week, right? Uh, just about one per week. We Jeez. say four to five out of the whole Project Cure system, about four to five uh, truckloads full every week. Uh, it was 218 last year, 218 shipments. We are constantly moving. I'd say Houston does about four, or you know, about one every week. Maybe we take a week off every month. Um, just depends on how things are moving. And wow. of course, it depends on what are the logistics. It can take two to three months from when it leaves our door for a container to make it into the country. These travel ocean going freight. They have to clear customs. Mm -hmm. We uh, go as expediently as possible. We cover those things before the containers leave so that they effectively get But you guys them. also have volunteers that will go on site when the container shows up yes. to unpack it, to recertify it, and to set it up, uh, which means you could be setting an entire community hospital up. I mean, you never know what you're going to be running into. Right. We really, we, this is something we did a little more before COVID. We're getting back into. We wish that there was enough funding for us to send a follow-up biomed team hmm. on every cargo load. But when we do have the ability to send a biomed team, we can do that. It's an additional service that we can provide. Right. Uh, we do have clinics if you have a practitioner in your house. Or if you just want to go help on a clinic trip, we have clinic trips. We have kits for kids programs. Um, Megan was here earlier. 
your children and your communities can pack health and hygiene kits that go on these containers. Everybody can volunteer in the warehouse. We start our limit about age 15 to volunteer here, but a great place to bring volunteers to have team programs, etc. We love our volunteers. 30,000 volunteers a year at Project Cure for our 34 paid staff nationwide. All right, guys. Well, that, I, I mean, I would like to go into a lot more detail. And obviously, um, it's, it's getting late, and uh, we have a bunch of teams here on site. And I'm going to leave information down in the video description where you can find out more about Project Cure. So you can donate or you can donate your time. Your time is probably more valuable than the equipment that you're donating. A lot of you biomeds, a lot of you interns out there, you guys trying to figure out what to do with your time. Well, what's a more nobler cause? And, you know, it's kind of convenient. There's locations all around the United States. Again, I will leave a lot of those in the video description so you can see which one's nearest to you. And uh, if you have some time, stop by. And if you're an intern, why don't you uh, get some experience? Looks good on a resume. And there's such a quantity of items in each one of these facilities that you're going to get years and years worth of experience in a very brief amount of time. So, Janet, thank you very much. Thank you. Justin, love being on your <laughs> channel. Love all that you do for such a great resource for our HDM community. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys at Project Cure. You have the ability to change someone's outcome in a developing country. We want you to be part of the Project Cure family. Can't wait to see you again, Justin, say it. Phoenix, Chicago, Denver, <laughs> Nashville, you got it. Uh, Kansas City, I don't want to forget <laughs> Philadelphia heading that way. And our brandy newest building in Nashville. We have a grand Nashville, opening nice. in Nashville on Leap Day. If you want to come visit us for the party, we'll see you in Leap Day at our location in Nashville. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. Thanks Thank for you, watching, Justin. guys. Contribute. <laughs>